In this video, we'll see how to detect outliers with the 1.5 IQR rule that is commonly used in box plots and then discuss how to deal with such outliers. A box plot shows the range and the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the difference between a third quartile and the first quartile. Quartiles are values that divide ordered numbers into quarters. For example, let's consider the following dataset. By plotting the data, we can easily see the order of the data points. We first need to identify the three quarters that separate the data into four parts so that we have an equal number of data points in each part. Since we have in total eight data points, we can break up the data with three lines so that we have two data points in each of the four parts. The lower quartile is called the first quartile whereas the upper quartile is called the third quartile. One simple method to calculate the values of these quartiles is based on a median. We first begin to determine the value of the second quartile, which is equal to the median of all data points. Since we have an even number of values, the median is here the mean of the two values in the middle. Quartile 2 is therefore equal to 5.5. The value of quartile 1 is the median of the lower half of the data, which is here equal to 3.5, since it is the mean value of 3 and 4. The value of quartile 3 is the median of the upper half of the data, which is here equal to 8.5. Now, the interquartile range is the distance between the first and the third quartile. This means that we subtract quartile 1 from quartile 3 which in this case results in that the interquartile range is equal to 5. Suppose that we now have only 7 values, which means that we now have an odd number of values. The median is then simply the middle value, and the lower quartile is now the middle value of the lower part, whereas the upper quartile is the middle value of the upper part. The interquartile range within this example also be equal to 5. Note that this is only one method out of many methods for calculating the quartiles and the interquartile range. There are several different methods to compute the quartiles. Therefore, different software tools may report different values. A so-called box plot, or box and whisker plot, is a graphical representation of the median the quartiles and the range. If we would create a box plot of the previous example data, it would look something like this. The lowest point represents the minimum value of the dataset, whereas the maximum point represents the maximum value of the dataset. The distance between the two ends of a box plot therefore represents the range in this example. The lowest part of the box represents the lowest quartile quartile 1, whereas the upper part of the box represents quartile 3, which means that the length of the box represents the interquartile range. The horizontal line inside the box represents the median, which corresponds to the second quartile. Now, suppose that this value would increase to 17. That would change the appearance of the box plot to this which now indicates that the largest value in the dataset is classified as an outlier. But what determines if a data point is classified as an outlier or not? Remember that the interquartile range is equal to 5. This range has not changed because quartile 1 and 3 are still the same. Any data point that is further away than 1.5 interquartile range from the box will be classified as an outlier. This means that the upper threshold that determines if a data point should be classified as an outlier is here 16, because any data point that is more than 1.5 interquartile range above the third quartile is classified as an outlier by the box plot, since 17 is greater than 16. This data point will be denoted with an asterisk to indicate that it is an outlier. Note that the upper whisker now shows the next highest value in the dataset. The corresponding lower threshold for outliers is here negative 4, 
because that is 1.5 interquartile range below the first quartile. So, we now know that we have an outlier in our data. What should we do with it? Suppose that we have measured the body heights of a bunch of people and created the following box plot that summarizes the data. We can see that we have an outlier. The first thing that we should do is to check if the outlier is due to a measurement error or a data entry error. If we have simply entered the wrong value, we can just correct the error. If the error is due to a measurement error, we can try to measure again and correct the value. If the outlier is not caused by a known error, we may ask ourselves if the value of the outlier makes sense. Although a body height of 210 cm or 6.9 feet is quite unusual in the population, it could still be a valid value. However, if the value is about 250 cm or 8 feet, such value makes no sense. If the value of the outlier does not seem to be a realistic value, it is likely due to an error. If we cannot correct such an error, we should remove the outlier. If you remove an outlier, you must always report that you have removed it and explain why. If the value of the outlier seems realistic, we should leave the outlier as it is and use a robust method to deal with outliers, such as non-parametric methods. If no appropriate method is available to deal with the outlier and where the outlier has a large effect on the analysis, it might be a good idea to remove it. One problem by using box plots to identify outliers is that they cannot detect outliers in a multivariate space. For example, suppose that we have measured the weight and height of a number of individuals. The data point up here seems to be an outlier because it is far away from the other data points. However, a box plot of the body weight will not identify this point as an outlier because the weight of this person is not extremely low. In addition, a box plot of the body height will not identify this point as an outlier because this person is not extremely tall. All of this is a clear outlier because the low weight of such a tall person is an extreme case. The box plots will not detect it as an outlier. To identify an outlier like this, we can instead use the Malanubis distance. By using the Malanubis distance, we can create an error ellipse around the data points, where data points outside such an ellipse can be classified as an outlier. If you like to learn how to detect outliers in a multivariate space, I would suggest that you have a look at my video about the Euclidean distance and the Malanubis distance. In the video about the assumptions in linear regression, I also explain how to detect outliers when you work with linear regression. Data points that have a major influence on, for example, the slope of the regression line can be identified with Cook's distance. This was the end of this lecture about outliers. Thanks for watching.